Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 41 of the Mind Blown Zone here with Brad. How are you, Brad? Never better as usual. And yourself, Matt? Uh, really well. And this one is called, because I did not mention, Clarifying Channeling New Age Occult and Mysticism. How are you feeling about this topic, Brad? Uh, I, it's a need to podcast. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting all this off my chest and hopefully bringing some clarity to our listeners so that we can move forward Beautiful. with it. Okay, I'm going to launch right into the bumper. Here we go. Here are four highly triggering words. Channeling, new age, occult, mysticism. For the religious, these conjure imagery of black magic, dark forces, and demonic energies. For the atheistic, they point directly at unprovable nonsense. Anything that these concepts may have to offer is blocked by immediate dismissal, skepticism, or anger by virtually anyone who isn't patient or courageous enough to listen. In this podcast, we will clarify a more accurate perception of the reference pointed to by such concepts as channeling New Age, occult, and mysticism. Perhaps the wisdom that you've been looking for all your life is right behind words that were once too triggering for most to investigate. Beautiful. Do you think that's possible, Brad? Well, we're certainly going to give it the old college try, as they say. Okie dokie. And, so whoop. go ahead. Yeah, you've got a, you're taking the intro here. So why don't you lean in? Yeah, give me one second. No, all right. Yeah, I'm ready. So yeah, um, so I wanted to just kind of, the reason I wanted to do this podcast was because I know I've mentioned some of these ideas in previous podcasts and, you know, the dilemma of saying these words is that, as Matt pointed out in the bumper script, that people have an idea about what these words mean and that idea may not be accurate or it may be tinged with, shall we say, efforts to tarnish any of these ideas to keep people away from sources coming you know from this realm or from these traditions or philosophies that we'll talk about and uh it does take a uh, for someone who does have a negative impression uh, of all these types of things it is going to take a bit of uh courageousness to look into them we understand that because there is uh you know thought around these ideas that prevents investigation and i su i'm suggesting in this podcast that that's going to be detrimental to uh, your understanding of life itself and what's happening right now, as we'll talk about in future podcasts. And, you know, perhaps more importantly to suggest that, you know, most of my uh, sources today, certainly for in present times are coming from these types of sources and that which informs all the ideas that I am sharing are almost exclusively coming from uh, these types of sources, whether they're from a long time ago or from today. So I think it's, in, I thought it was important that I try to clarify these for people uh, so that we're all on the same page going forward. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I think that, uh, you know, these, uh, these concepts are scary when you haven't realized that you're the ultimate authority um, over what's true or not for you. Uh, and, you know, if you're still in believing people how much authority they have or something like that, then, you know, if you hear about these topics, then you might accidentally believe it <laughs> and then fall into this world of lies and darkness that uh, it's totally safe to listen to things when you're the authority over your knowledge. So right. you can good listen points. to whatever you want without fear. Very good points. Yeah. It, it is about you, about somebody, uh, having the, you know, the bravery to say, all right, well, maybe I believe something that isn't true. I'm willing to give some of these things a listen and check this stuff out. So that's maybe a big step for some people. Um, but I can, you know, I want to make a point that these, these terms and ideas have been deliberately, uh, you know, uh, taunted and ridiculed by the establishment because they don't want you to find out what these sources are offering. That's going to be my major contention. And I just wanted to make a couple of these bullet points. One is that, you know, I think I've mentioned this before, but, you know, the history that we've been taught is almost all lies. I mean, there are, sure, there are true elements of it, but in general, uh, our history is vastly different than anything 
we've been taught, <clears throat> excuse me, by the establishment. And I think I've also mentioned that, you know, I, we could run a podcast channel alone to just, just to cover all the different topics. I mean, it's a, a massive subject, obviously, but that, you know, hopefully that uh, helps a little bit for people that are in, at least in somewhat uh, agreement with that idea. Uh, I also wanted to point out that, you know, the popular establishment options, usually, usually there are two options, right? Either you're Democrat or Republican, you're left or you're right, you're liberal or you're conservative, you're atheist or you're Christian, right? That all of the options that are on the table in the popular domain are contrived, and either way you go, you're trapped. So, and it doesn't matter, right? There are there are so many lies baked into these different options that they're and and those are designed to trap you, right? They have some elements of truth in them, uh, but mostly there are falsehoods baked into these uh, you know establishment choices. So. You know, I, as I said before, you know, I can piss off a whole room of people if I don't agree with side X or side Y, you know, I'm side Z. And, uh, you know, so everybody's mad at me because I don't agree with either side uh, sometimes. But the idea here, of course, is that if you want to head towards this idea of sovereignty and taking your power back and, you know, having a more uh, positive, uh, optimistic life and being happy, then you're going to have to break out of these ideas. And what we're going to talk about here tonight are some of the sor best sources on the planet that I've found to help you break out, break out of those chains. So hopefully uh, this will encourage people to keep listening and reconsider what they believe these terms mean. Uh, and my last point I wanted to just make real quickly was that I've always, I've maintained for a long time that uh, any person or source that's even close to speaking truth isn't allowed anywhere near any of our public airwaves. No popular channels, right? They're not popularized on social media, and nobody can get anywhere near getting on television or into a movie or something like that, a popular movie. So yep. that's a you know that's a bold statement I make, but do do some people on TV you know or on social media have true things to say? Sure, uh, but they're not popular and or not well known and oftentimes they get they find their uh content being shadow banned or eliminated altogether depending on which platform we're talking about so with that in mind we wanted to kick down to uh some first impressions here right yeah uh yeah the i mean we covered in the bumper script there's two crowds there's the religious people and the atheist people, and they have different reactions to it. Uh, the religious people kind of sense, like if you bring, if you say, why don't we uh, have a discussion about the occult? <laughs> you know, how well would that go down with um, right. you know, some straight edge, you know, uh, Christians? That's doesn't. It's like, whoa, this person wants to talk about the occult. There's some Satanist, right? That's, but then it's like, uh, what? No, that's not not it, or. You know, anything like that. New Age misses it and all just sounds like freaky deaky stuff, right? Right. And then you've got the atheists and, you know, with the, well, the atheists, I mean, is almost a perfect correlation with someone who believes in the Big Bang and materialism and evolution and life from nothing and then random particles moving around to make consciousness uh, emerge out of nothing. And so anything that doesn't fit right into that uh, physicalism science is automatically unprovable nonsense. Exactly. And if you can't prove it, then it's out. And you know, and perhaps another knock against the the materialist group is if if it isn't these uh, people aren't revered or or talked about or studied in universities, then they're obviously not worth thinking about. Yeah, I mean. You know, it's not like any, like very few atheists would have the perfect map of all science in their head. You know, most of it, it's it's got to be belief somewhere along the chain. So, of course, scientism, right? Scientism. So yeah, the uh, what we get from both groups, and it's not a criticism; it's just an observation, is that we we get what I call these instant insta dismissals, right? It's just this immediate shut down you know it, you know the term conspiracy theorist was treated this way right mm, yeah yeah it, you know, they're 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 getting they're getting their uh respect more and more every day but that word was demonized by the establishment 
uh, just, a, you know, you say, oh, that guy's just a conspiracy theorist. And that shut off any further consideration of that, what that person had to say just by using those two words. And so what we're suggesting here tonight is that these four words that we picked out are, have a similar uh, situation. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I, I don't know. It's like somehow these like energies just got just wrapped up in the words. You just say the word and it's like, boom, an explosion of dismissal just erupts. You want to talk about some new age stuff? No. It's all demonic. How about mysticism? All, <laughs> all right. Chan well, channeling is the big one. It's going to be a tough one to get through here today. But what were your, uh, what were your impressions of these, Matt? I, you know, I think you had some familiarity with some of these before we met, but you know, you had a, had your own ideas about what they meant or could mean. And we, I kind of wanted to hear what your impressions were of these uh, particular terms that we're going to talk about. Sure. Yeah. So just when we were planning the content for this, uh, this podcast, we just went through each of these terms and I just wrote down, I think it was like, no, I'm not, wasn't trying to say like what they were before we met. Cause who, who knows? I can't remember, but just, just recently, you know? So I said that channeling when one being opens up their consciousness antenna to a non-physical source and receives the message. What did you think of that Which one, Brad? I, I thought it was a great uh, explanation, actually. I like that antenna idea. That's good. It's a good way to phrase it. Now, obviously, that sounds scary to most people or anybody who's not familiar with this, rather. So, um, and, and rightfully so. It is, it is weird based on, you know, the normal things we've been taught in society. No question about that. Um, what else channeling there? Uh, we got the new age one. Oh, you, well, you sure, said it sure sounds, move on to that. You said it sounded plausible to you. Um, oh yeah. I wasn't sure what that was. I was like, did I write that or did you? <laughs> oh yeah. I think it was just a comment that, um, no, I don't, I, I don't, let's just leave that. I have no idea what it means. Okay. We'll just All get right. a new age. New Age, I wrote concepts of consciousness and spirituality from the 1850s. Like I thought, oh yeah, isn't that when those people started to like just break out of materialism a bit and talk and then it just moved in, went into a whole movement and they got this whole conceptual framework and they talk spirituality through that. That's what I thought New Age is. Yeah, no, that's great. And and you, and you kind of combined new, the, what, they, what they called the new thought movement, which kind of appeared at that time. Uh, you know, which evolved into the new age. I mean, I think most people think of them in the same vein nowadays. So those two mm -hmm. words kind of merged, but yeah, that's a good, that's another good uh, impression of it. What's next? Uh, we got occult and I feel like I found out at some point that occult simply meant hidden. Uh, so I wrote hidden concepts of spirituality and consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, I did note that before I'd ever spoken to you, I just thought it was like, isn't that stuff with witches and demons and pentagrams? <laughs> right, right. That's that's the you know if you if you pulled the you know a thousand people at a mall or whatever, I think you'd get that definition, you know, nine hundred and eighty, nine hundred and ninety times. Uh, right, like you would definitely time. need to wear black and be involved with blood <laughs> somehow. <laughs> right, you'd have to have the goth look or something, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Cool. So we can see that that one uh, ha is in play. What's next? Uh, mysticism. I wrote calling on the powers of non-physical and directing them upon reality to create. All right. That's it. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's you're you're on target with that. Okay. So in mystic, the idea of somebody being a mystic. What was your? Do you have a thought on what that? implies oh he's a mystic what does that mean to you well i guess that they they were you know practiced in the arts right and they'd actually <laughs> had success by doing ceremonies and rituals and the occultic arts they can actually make <laughs> things happen <laughs> which arts yeah, would you yeah, say yeah. i said yeah practice in the occultic arts yeah or the mystic arts you know right it all gets blurry, and yeah, that's why there's no clarity. That, that these are purposefully unclear things, but obviously, 
you know, in the mainstream, uh, you know, vocabulary, they're, they're definitely all bad slash negative slash wrong for the most part. Yeah. And, and it's not just whether that it's bad or wrong or whatever, but it's also that it's like my comprehension of it is just like a, a, a sh slight identification and slight description and that's it. Something like that kind of thing, maybe right. like no details, no certainty, no evidence, no comprehension, <laughs> just right. Weak. Right. Yeah. We, we certainly aren't taught anything uh, about these other than this is, you know, here's this evil guy from history and he was part of the occult and they considered him a mystic and he channeled demons. And that's, that's how we hear about these things. Right. That's how they're presented to us. And, mm -hmm. uh, that yeah. leaves a, you know, the moment you hear somebody doing this, that's the impression that's brought up, popular impression. But we're going to try to redefine and clarify some of these, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, right on. So, so the first one we got here is channeling. So, why don't you yeah, go so and clarify channeling for us, Brad? My first, uh, you know, well, my first comment was that Matt's, Matt's impressions were reasonably accurate. Uh, what I wanted to say about this is that. I want to suggest that what 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 are considered the biblical prophets uh, were doing exactly this. You know, they were quote channeling higher. You know, this is where it gets messy. Uh, we have to say disembodied or non physical or higher beings or entities is the idea here, and uh, this is clearly what was happening when you know these supposed. You know, messengers of God wrote down some of the scripture that they wrote. Well, all of the scripture, if you believe uh, most Christians, that was, you know, it was, uh, they believe that it was, uh, you know, sent to them by God, which isn't inaccurate, but it isn't as accurate as they, you know, tend to think. And uh, this is, this form of passing information has been going on between then and now. It's always been happening. And, you know, I'll talk a little bit about, you know, what, what they think, what's happening, and we'll, you know, leave the listener to make their decisions on whether they're comfortable or uncomfortable with that. Uh, one of the things that, you know, when I've mentioned this to people in the past, that it's funny that they, that whatever, for whatever reason, what conjures up in their mind is, the, is this idea of seances, which are also these, you know, dark room, basement, scary, you know, things, right? These weird things that people can't really put their finger on what's happening, but they know for sure that it's all dark and evil and everything else, right? What's your impression of the idea of a seance? Uh, my impression is that I had to Google it. <laughs> okay. You never heard that term. That's interesting. I uh, maybe just heard it, but uh, just to clarify here, according to Google only, a meeting at which people attempt to make contact with the dead, especially through the agency of a medium. Yeah, medium. That's another. Yeah, that's another phrase that people use that for somebody who can channel. Right, call them a medium. That's an interesting choice of terms. In other words, they're in between the entity providing the information, the non-physical entity, and the you know obviously the humans that are looking for guidance or wisdom or help or talking to the, a dead relative or whatever they wanted. Uh, but well, that's, it's funny uh, how we have we watch the media and there's different channels. <laughs> Yeah, right. Media. Media is just plural of mediums. Right. Medium, yeah. Yeah. And so apparently they're the mediums and they're channeling. That's and right. That's what we're watching. That's a great, that's a great correlation you made there. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know, this is the hard part for most people to hear this. And I'm I'm not gonna try to make an effort to say you've got to believe it and it's gotta be right. And the idea is is that, you know, a person who wants to do channeling, and this is almost always the way it happens, right? They make a choice uh, that they want to channel some higher being, and they can even pick the being they want to channel. Now, they don't they don't always have to, or necessarily that's what happens, but they, the idea is that you can open the channel. And usually these people are pretty good at meditation or clearing their mind of their own monkey mind thoughts. And, you know, with the right training and preparation, they can open themselves up to these entities that are that don't even ha have a physical body, and uh, there are zillions of them 
if you believe what these resources are saying. And I, I of course, do, but I understand why people wouldn't. Uh, but you know, you can think of it however you want. Most people, well, most religious people think that there's a life after death. And uh, of course, that their you know relatives and family and friends and so forth all still exist in another realm. And this is the idea behind channeling is that these entities from other realms can speak through you know the mouth and body of a human being if they allow it. What are your impressions on that, Matt? I know it's not as clean as it could be, but what do you think? Well, it sounds like you explained it well. Um, if you're asking me, what are my impressions in terms of whether I know whether it's true or believe it's true, I have no idea. Is there some more specific thing you're asking me? Well, just if it gives you the, does it give you a, a, a sense of, you know, give you the heebie-jeebies a little bit? Does it make you feel uncomfortable? I mean, it certainly made me feel uncomfortable when I first learned about it. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was very skeptical. And, no, uh, it doesn't, doesn't give me any of that. Okay. No, well, I was a skeptic. Needless to say, um, and we'll talk about my first exposure to it in a little bit. I wouldn't say I'm really a skeptic, like, okay. like if you if you've got spirituality, if that part if that's right in general, then channeling is kind of a given. Well, there you go. Matt's got a so, very open mind, as yeah. Most if of it, if there's have. really spirits, then channeling channeling at that point is not a, really a stretch, is it? You're right. Right. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's the idea that it can only be bad, and we'll we'll get into that here in a little bit, right? No, no good entity would ever do such a thing. So anyway, uh, so the channeling manifests in a couple different ways. Uh, you know, one of them they call automatic writing, and a lot of these people who are capable of channeling today uh, start out this way, where they and they'll just open up and put a pencil in their hand, put a piece, of, you know, notebook down, and they'll try to open the channel. And you know, the idea is you just start writing whatever comes to your mind. And that's really what channeling basically is. Uh, they've, they've moved aside part of their, you know, awareness as it, as it were, but they keep, they still maintain their conscious awareness of the outside. And after they start reading, writing some things that they had no idea, right? But usually what they'll say is, I didn't know any of this stuff. It just came flowing out on the paper and I read it back and I was like, wow, that's amazing. And that, that further encourages them oftentimes to get into what's probably the most common thing, which is trance channeling. And that's the idea that the person opening to do the channeling uh, moves their consciousness, if you will, aside just by not engaging in thinking, more or less. And they agree to this other worldly entity speaking through them. And so the, uh, the other entity will pop in and the person that was there kind of just goes off into hibernation in a way. They're not aware of what's being said right through their body. And they have to, you know, go back and watch a tape of it or listen to it to know what was said. That's the, that's the most common by far. Uh, and a, but a few people are, you can do what I call consciously aware channeling, where they can listen to what's being said. They know that it's not their uh, gumption in saying the words, but they know they know they're coming out of their mouth. But they aren't, you know, they weren't like uh, motivated to say them, but they can hear it and listen to it. So they don't need to be told after the session what was being said. So those are kind of the three main types. Again, the trans channels, and we'll talk about a few popular ones here in a second, are the are by far the most common types out there. Uh, any uh, questions about that, Matt? Mm, no. Okay. Some more later. So now in fairness to religiously oriented people, I do want to say a few things. First of all, that the channel can open up to a dark entity and it does happen. It's happened many, many times in the past. It's happening right now and it'll happen in the future. Uh, there are both beings of light and beings of dark that like to take advantage of these people who opened a channel. Uh, and not all are skilled, practiced, or taught well enough to avoid these dark entities. So there are certain techniques that can be uh, taken uh, to avoid such a thing. And, uh, what, but I think, you know, rather than sitting and worrying about this for anybody who's, you know, has the, uh, the courage to check some of these out, uh, the lit, really the litmus test, it's really easy to see whether you're dealing with a dark entity or not, is whether that the information elicits fear or judgment out of you. And there are plenty of 
sources out there where you can see, ah, oh, we're going to hang the bad guys and you, you got to ground up this and, you know, we're, we're going to kill all the evil ones and you can hear, you know, what they're doing. And it's obviously a dark entity or a dark channel. You'll never hear that <laughs> from the, the light channels. So if anyone ever has any doubt, if any type of fear or judgment is elicited from you, you're dealing with a dark channeling. Simple as that. It's not complicated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So as far as actual sources of channeling, so there's no question that uh, Abraham Hicks is the most popular without a doubt. And this is uh, a woman was started out a husband and wife and, and the woman Esther Hicks. Uh, she's one of these rare people that doesn't have, the monkey mind problem that most of us do. So she was very receptive to opening up to this entity that called itself Abraham. And uh, they've become wildly successful. You know, I'd say many, many millions listen to Abraham Hicks or are aware of Abraham Hicks is what they, you know, commonly are called the, the you know, combination of Esther and the, the other entity. And they go all around the country for the last, you know, 20, 30 years doing seminars uh, all over the place. And, you know, really what their focus is, but they, you know, law of attraction or manifesting is what they mainly point to and help people, you know, get better at making their lives better effectively, right? Whether it's money or relationships or health, uh, those are the main topics, but that's the, that's the foray of Abraham Hicks. Um, and I know Matt's listened to a little bit of them. Uh, as far as books go, no question that A Course in Miracles, or ACIM as it's often abbreviated, is uh, by far the most popular book that's ever been produced of the channeled sort that I'm aware of. And, uh, you know, this book is claimed to be channeled by Jesus or Yeshua. And so that obviously sends certain people reeling. But, you know, you think about what Jesus said, I'm always with you and I am before Abraham and, you know, on and on and on. Why wouldn't Jesus be giving messages to, to people today. And of course, I think that is happening. And that's an interesting book uh, for the simple fact that the woman uh, who did the channel, she did it via, hers was automatic writing, by the way. It was not trans-channel. And, you know, the short version of her story is that she was a professor at Columbia and her department, like it was a sociology department, was having these intractable uh, problems and arguments and they couldn't get anything working and I think she threw up her hands one day. She said, I, I just, I'd do anything to fix this problem. And the next thing you know, she starts getting these urges to write stuff. And this book pops out that, you know, it's probably become the most read book in the esoteric Christianity spaces. So just an example. And it's a powerful book. You know, I, I, I refer to it often. And, uh, there's the two more books that came after it that I think are even more powerful, but we're not going to talk about those tonight, but they're also channeled by Jesus. Those are the, the three most powerful books I've read, all Jesus channeled for the record. Uh, another guy uh, is named Bashar. Have you listened to any Bashar, Matt? I forget. Oh, yeah. Quite a bit. Okay. So Bashar is channeled by a guy named Daryl Anka. He's uh, out in uh, Hollywood, Los Angeles area. And uh, he's uh, he's the Abraham and Bashar, are, you know, the two most popular. And he, Bashar, they're both really funny and uh, and fun. But Bashar's a little more specific. Abraham's a little more general. That's the the general take on those. But you can go give that that one a listen. These are you know legit uh, sources. Um, the first one I stumbled into, which is very popular by the way, is called the Raw Material or the Law of One. And that's free and available online. Law of is the URL. It's the first thing I read right after the hidden hand drop. And uh, I just, you know, that was my month of mind blowing uh, material that changed my life between those two sources. Uh, and that, that was a group of people actually that all collaborated to create that channeling experience. It's an interesting story, well worth investigating, but, or go read the material and see what you think. Uh, another popular source is Archangel Michael. Uh, and you know, the, obviously Archangel Michael has a lot of lore with uh, the Bible and especially over in Europe, especially in Ukraine where that, you know, that's a uh, Archangel Michael, Michael is uh, super popular in Ukraine and Russia. Um, another source that's very common there. I, I would say there are probably hundreds of people channeling the Pleiadians. 
And for those of you who don't know, the Pleiades is a star system that we can see, you know, and when we look out in the night sky, five stars. And the, these are entities that say that's their home. And, what you know, whether you believe it or not is less important, but actually looking at the, their material is what I'm suggesting in all of these. Uh, suspend your, uh, you know, incredulity and disbelief and see what they have to say. Uh, and another popular source, again, I would say hundreds of people channel what's known as Sananda or Lord Sananda. And the suggestion is, is that this is the consciousness of Jesus now in uh, in the sixth dimension is the suggestion. That's where the group, the raw consciousness it says they are as well. So a little bit beyond where we are, to say the least, here in the third dimension. And lastly, I couldn't leave out my, uh, my purple pal, St. Germain. He was the... He was uh, the source that changed my life the most after uh, the hidden hand and raw material. Uh, it was the, it was what spoke to me more than anything else. And uh, the, the particular book was called The I Am Discourses was the one that, uh, you know, knocked me over. So those are some popular sources. I, I encourage people to hunt for them. You can find all kinds of stuff online, on YouTube, and give it a listen. Look for that fear and judgment aspect and uh, see what they have to say. I highly encourage it. Any uh, any comments, Matt? Sure. So I guess the main controversy that comes up with channeling is, mm -hmm. is it real? Right? Well, it's definitely so, real. <laughs> so how would you say, um, two couple few questions, like one, how could someone determine whether it's real or not? Two, does it matter if it's real or not? Um, yeah, maybe they're just those two. What do you mean by so you're saying what? How do we know the person isn't faking it? Right, they're just pretending to be. Yeah, yes Yeshua yep. or Bashar. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would yeah, say like, how do you know that Dara Ankar isn't just like, oh yes, I am Bashar? <laughs> right. right? The, yeah. the short answer to the question is, you'll know. You'll know because you you've never met any humans that are as sharp and quick and accurate and non fearful and non judgmental as these sources. Mm. Yeah, right. that's the best evidence for me so far as well. We we've discussed this as well, like that Abraham or Esther, like the the stuff she says is just like one hundred percent consistently aligned. Right. There's, there there's nothing there's nothing incorrect ever. Like I, and when I say incorrect, ups. aligned, it's just like you can sense whether inf whether whether you know conceptual phrasings or statements are like drawing you into alignment, or like whether they're casting off fear and judgment or whether they're taking you into darkness. Like you can tell. Right. And every single sentence that she ever says in whatever, how many decades she's been going, every single thing is aligned. So that just right. makes me go either Esther herself is fully enlightened or you've got Abraham there. Is that how you interpret it? Yeah, right. And, and the, you know, all of these, the, there's no uhs and ums and pauses. There's no mm. slip ups, right? It's just, it just flows, right? The words constantly flow. There's no human talk slash pauses slash breakups it's all clear they never correct themselves right it's it's mm -hmm. all super sharp so yeah once you've heard enough of it there's no doubt that's why i'm saying you'll know if you listen and uh you know i you know i obviously vouch for all these sources well you know some of the archangel michael and some of the pleiadian right and some of the saint germain so sources i certainly uh vouch for but or you can read the books right the course in miracles the raw material and you can judge for yourself whether or not it resonates. And like you say, you feel like it's aligned information or not. So Yeah, and the second kind of question there was like, does it matter? Because, I, you know, some of them I'm like, well, this raw material, I have no idea. This is freaky deaky stuff, right? Six dimensional raw kind of thing. I'm reading it. Uh, same with like Pleiadians. That's like, okay, we're out in the stars. We're distant beings or something like that even bashar is kind of like okay i'm this crazy alien yeah we got other planets and stuff you know so sometimes it's like you just don't know right 
You just yeah. like can't be certain. But it's also like it literally of, doesn't matter. That's right. None of that's important. <laughs> right? It doesn't matter at all. <laughs> right. What's important is what they tell you. Like if you do these things, you're going to see results, the results that you're looking for. Right. Yeah. If you can follow this guidance, right, about improving in various areas of your life, then you're going to be happy because the, as they all tell you, right, you've, you've created all the situations in your life and you can uncreate them just as easily as you've created them. And so that's, you know, what more empowering message could you ask for? Mm -hmm. All right. What, what people that push against this stuff are the ones who are locked into victim consciousness, right? So this is hard for them to hear. Oh, yeah, because everything, as I said, everything that Esther says is always aligning, which means takes you away from victim mentality. So when you're in victim mentality and you listen to it, but you don't want to let go of victim mentality, everything sounds horrible. Yeah, it's, it's frightening because we've mm -hmm. given so much power away. Yeah. For sure. But yeah, it's like I said, it, all of those... You can't not listen to or read any of these sources and not come away with uh, some empowering, whether you want to be empowered or not, they're going to, you're going to get some empowering material. And, you know, it's funny, more importantly, is that all of these sources will tell you too, that we're not telling you anything you don't already know. You've just forgotten. Mm -hmm. So that's encouraging as well, right? So yeah, these, all of these sources have, uh, been incredibly important in my life and uh they're all channeled sources so take it for what you will what's next here ah uh, yes new age <laughs> the new age yeah More precisely I... we've written down <laughs> astrological shift from the age of pisces into the age of Aquarius. and we had what about a half hour in 2012 uh, clarification ahead. slash uh <laughs> argument slash uh, discussion about this the other night when we were writing the outline. I'm like, so are you saying this, <laughs> this age, and it's the same as this, or <laughs> like, what are you saying? Just, can you be clear? <laughs> yeah, and all, all I was trying to say was that's how, that's how the name arose, right? And it's attributed to the 1970s when we had, you know, this age of Aquarius, the play and music and song and everything that became popular. And so it was the, you know, kind of the proponents of, you know, wanting humanity to shift into this age of love, right? With, as it's, you know, uh, thought about. And, uh, it, you know, it was a bunch of kooky hippies and drug addicts and weirdos that were involved in it. So that kind of became the moniker for this idea of new age. And, mm. you know, and anything, so anything that doesn't come from an established religious tradition right? Since then has given the stamp new age. Right. Right. And so that, it, it, all that new age stuff is kind of independent religious and spiritual thought, right? It's like non-establishment spiritual thought. Right. It's, it's, it's meant to cover all of them. And, uh, you know, and, and it's retroactive too, because people think of Elena Lovatsky and Alice Bailey and Charles Ledbetter and Alice Crowley, right? Those are all new age people as well. So that, that, and that goes back to, you know, 1880. So it, it's retroactive in that sense. So it's all the non traditional religious spiritual material that's come out the last 150 years kind of falls into this category now. Mm -hmm. And it's a really now bad word. The, now that's the thought, that's the information. However, you're saying that the, actual new age started in 2012 well that that's the line of demarcation so there was something to the, the you know the mayan calendar is what i've heard right this was the official shifting line if you will and it's but it obviously isn't perceived by us and it isn't perceived by the majority of people but it was perceivable to those who were at a certain level of consciousness but yeah, that mm -hmm. December 12th, 20, December 12th or December 21st, 2012 was the official end of the age of Pisces, as I understand it. Now, that could be wrong. I don't have any proof of that, but that's how I under, what I understand. 
Mm -hmm. Now, let's let's clarify what we the discussion that we had a few days ago. I'm not sure if people don't realize this, but uh, there's sometimes a three hour discussion that needs to take mm -hmm. place before we even get these podcasts prepared, <laughs> so that we're both right. on the same page. So you've got right. a time thing here, like a new age starting, but the wisdom itself is not. It doesn't isn't necessarily the wisdom of the age of Aquarius and there was the wisdom of the age of Pisces. It's just kind of like a some sort of overlap here because what you want to say is this wisdom was really there in the previous age as well a long time ago, right? It's not special information of the new age. It's really old age wisdom, just the same, right? Right. Did I, did I cover that correctly? Well, close enough, and and, and it's and it's <laughs> always been there. It isn't it isn't like it only existed in this age or that age. It's right. always been there, right? But it was it was occult or esoteric for the past however many twelve thousand years, right? It was hidden purposefully by the people who control this planet, and so. As I like to, you know, another word I threw out at, uh, did I put that in this section here? You know, this word, this idea of divine dispensation. Mm -hmm. Right. I guess we didn't write it somehow, but I remember there, saying it. There was an opening that happened called a divine dispensation where the humanity was going to be exposed to, re exposed to the wisdom of, of the ages, if you will. And that really happened, in, in my opinion, in 1888. And that was the Helena Blavatsky, Helena Blavatsky's Secret Doctrine book. And ironically, you know, the much simpler, so that's, you know, Eastern, Aryan, you know, uh, Tibetan, Buddhist, you know, it, it came from the Tibetan monks is the story. And it, so it has a different flavor to it. So it's harder for the Western mind to read. But at the same year that she put her book out, Prentice Mulford put out, you know, Thoughts or Things and uh, your forces and how to use them. And they're both saying the same thing, right? But his is just the non-religious slash spiritual folksy, how you live your life presentation of it, right? Here's the here's what mm -hmm. you want to do if you want to avoid this. Here's what you want to do if you want to gain this. And effectively, it's I think it's there, there's no uh, coincidence that both of those books came out in 1888. That was an opening, if you will. And in America, Mulford's pretty much credited with being the, you know, the father slash founder of what what was called the New Thought Movement, which lasted, you know, from you know 1875 to 1970 or so, and it ended with Neville Goddard, uh, his passing. Anyway, yeah, that's right. I I tell people anybody that's willing to listen for a second, the New Age is really the old age. It's all the same. Uh, it's just been hidden from us for a long time in the popular domain. But you could go to, right, an ashram, a monastery, a hermitage, right, where these off the beaten path kind of secret little places of, you know, spiritual study, and this information would be given to you or in a secret society. Yeah? Yeah. It's a little interesting here, thing here you didn't mention. Referring to the wisdom by it, an age is derogatory. Yeah, in that sense, right? Because it's like you said before, it's like wis wisdom doesn't have an age or a time. Wisdom is always, right? What's right. true tr is always true. Right. Yeah. That's right. So by That's saying right. that this wisdom is of an age, you're almost immediately discrediting it by saying it's not eternally true. Right. Exactly. Yeah. The truth has never changed and never will. But obviously, the presentation of information can be modified, altered, subverted, inverted. And that's what's happened to humanity for the past, basically, the entire Piscean age. It's, it's worth saying that Jesus and Buddha and Lao Tzu and Muhammad and others were teaching correct things, but they've been grossly twisted and inverted, manipulated, and subverted into what people believe today. And that's the unfortunate result of some of these beings that were teaching true things by the mainstream for us.
All right. So I talked about the New Thought Movement real quick. Yeah. Phineas, Dr. Phineas Quimby is uh, kind of credited with uh, uh, being the a re real founder of it, but he was really, he was more in, an interesting guy. He did mesmerism and then later like, people considered him a doctor because he could heal people. But of course, he didn't really heal people. He just showed people what they were doing to themselves and causing all their grief. And so he was famous for that. And then Prentice. And then there's been dozens and dozens of, uh, Contributors, you know, from 1890 to 1960, uh, Neville Goddard being the probably, well, definitely the most popular of all of them. Uh, and we'll talk about him in a little bit here in a second. All right. I think that's enough for the new age. And, uh, oh, yeah. I, I wanted to point out that there are bad actors in the new age, just like there are bad actors in Christian churches and bad actors in universities and bad actors in corporations, right? There, in, in any time you make a big class or grouping, yeah, there are bad people mixed up in it, trying to take advantage of it. Fraudsters, cheaters, liars. For well, sure. Are there some of those in the new age movement? Of course. Just like there are in every other movement. Yeah. Okay. Better watch out for them. <laughs> you know, the person who gets the most hate there is Alice Bailey and her Lucius trust, the Lucifer trust. Not going to get into that tonight, but that's people link her to New Age and Lucifer, and she's evil, and uh, that's you know that's the big one. Or Al Alistair Crowley, another one that people try to link, or Charles Ledbetter, and uh, unfortunately, they started out. A lot of them started out in the right path and veered off, as often happens. In the case of Alistair Crowley. All right. Shall we move to a cult? Yes, we should. So I think we've mentioned think? before, people think it's mm -hmm. about summoning demonic entities, using wisdom for self-gain, manipulating others to your own will, brackets, black magic. Right. Does that sound fair, right. Brad? Yeah, it is fair. And that, that does happen. And people have done that and are doing that to this day. So with the hidden wisdom, esoteric wisdom, occult wisdom, right? People learn it. Some people decide that they want to take advantage of knowing it where, while others don't, and they manipulate the world around them and the free will of people around them in order to get what they want. And that is effectively the definition of black magic. And so are there occultists who have done this? Yeah, many, 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 many through history. And of course, those are the only occultists we're ever taught, told about, right? Are the dark black magicians. Yeah, right. But like saying it's only about the black stuff, black magic stuff would be like saying that if there was a con man, then you, then that's say like, you would say like accounting is just a con. Right. 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 <laughs> There's a whole yeah. legitimate, you know, right. work there. Or guns are evil, right? Like, I've got to get rid of all the guns because they're evil. Right? No, they're not, right. obviously, right? But in the hands of somebody who wishes to cause harm to somebody, that, then, you know, it's the person who makes the choice to use the tool the way that they use it. And that's no different with occult wisdom. Yeah? Right. So the wisdom is neutral. You know, you can direct it how you how you will. That's right. But this is the definition that we've all gotten received about a cult. And by the way, esoteric essentially means the same thing. There's really no difference between the two. And so, you know, we did the podcast, the, you know, a couple of weeks ago about esoteric Christianity, of course, and you can, you can use your wisdom from esoteric Christianity to manipulate the free will of others. And ironically, that's what our establishment institutions have been doing to us since time immemorial. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what they're doing. They're manipulating us with, you know, half-truths, lies, and deceptions in order to get us to give our power away. So you could say that the cabal are black magicians by definition. Well, it's funny they how you can have people you know, watching the media, being entertained, having their mind put in a, you know, state good for programming. And then, you know, 
the cabal through the media use the occult wisdom to disempower these people and teach them a whole bunch of nonsense. And then those people turn right around and then go, occult? Isn't that black magic stuff? I don't <laughs> want to know anything about that. It's like, <laughs> yeah, right. uh, it's like you're literally getting programmed by that every single day. That's right. You better know about it. <laughs> That's exactly right. I'm going to do a podcast one day about how, you know, the people who run this world know how the reality works, but they don't teach us. And uh, unfortunately, all those people are using effectively black magic. I think the weaponized media is a good one to go back to OS. Mm -hmm. Good one we did around 13. All right, what's next here? Well, here's a question. Oh, Let me ask ahead. this question. So, okay, you say, oh, esoteric, a call it slow. Well, it's the same thing. But it does seem like, it just seems like you got esoteric, but then you got a cult. Some, <laughs> something seems like a bit of a step up. Do you perceive that? I, I don't, but yeah, in the, popu in the popular understanding, yeah, it's, they seem radically different. Mm -hmm. Right? Like professors, uh, PhDs at universities think they have access to esoteric information, so it's not as bad of a word, right? And it's only, only available to somebody who's reached their level of uh, knowledge on a particular subject, so they'll call it esoteric. But effectively, mm -hmm. they mean the same thing. They just mean... It's not well, it's not for the public. It's not for the general masses. That's the idea. Right. And that can only imply that it's hidden. It feels like the esoteric stuff, it's like not, um, it's not for the masses, but it's like by the, by the masses choice, like uh, it's just not for them. Like it's there. They can, they can go get it, but they won't. But a cult is literally hidden and blocked. Yeah. I can see how you had that impression. Yeah, and it, I mean, who knows what these words really point at, but uh, that's just how it feels. Right on. Okay, mysticism? Yeah, yeah. What's the general opinion? In fairness to the general public, there have been many false... Oh, this is one of your uh, prefaces. There have been many false self-proclaimed mystics, just like there were black magicians who misused their occult wisdom. Right. Just right. like there are bad Christians, bad atheists, or bad mystics, sure. Uh, right. Note, often people to the occult behave like black magicians. It's almost I didn't really natural. cover the general opinion, though. Or, is, or are we just trying to point out that it's quite similar to the occult? Well, that's the opinion, is that a mystic is some kind of manipulative weirdo, right, that doesn't fit into society. It's another kind of you know, on the perimeter, <laughs> perimeter, periphery of society. And you know, mm. people just kind of like, yeah, leave that guy alone. Don't, don't get involved with him. He's a weirdo. Stay away. Right. He's manipulating you somehow. Right. That's kind of the general, my take on the general sense. I don't know. What's yours? Uh, not really sure, but they used to call Gurdj a mystic. Yeah, I was going to mention him here, here in a second. Yeah, you were you you stumbled into some Gurdjieff before you met me, Gurdjieff. Um, kind of, he's more of a Sufi mystic, and Sufi is Sufism is esoteric Islam. So the the mystic monitor is kind of given to people who get who study the esoteric versions of the Abrahamic religions. That's the general way this word uh -huh. is used, right? So there's, uh, you know, Sufi mystics and Christian mystics and Jewish mystics, but they don't call, you know, the Indian gurus and swamis and yogis, they don't call them mystics, right? And the Buddhist guys are, you know, Rinpoche or Zen master, right? Called a master, that kind of a thing. So this term mysticism is generally applied to the Abrahamic religions. Not that there's any difference in reality, but it just goes to show how terms are, terms, labels, categories are used and generally understood by people. Yeah. Yeah. I think I realized some, something else that's mixed in there with this perception of mysticism or mystic. It's that they're kind of like, it's kind of like what you said, like with esoteric, but they're kind of like plugged into this like other realm of like knowledge. Right, they're like they can almost like just consult the the hidden spiritual realms and draw out the answers 
from there. Like, I, you know, let me realms. look into my <laughs> magic bowl of, you know, my cauldron and like, ah, oh, yes. Right. Like secret knowledge, like conjured up. Right. Right. The hidden knowledge that's all around all of us at all times. Right. They, 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 their perception is different. Right. They're perceiving less from the mind, mm -hmm. more, more from the heart. Right. right. Less, less from the five senses, more from the inner intuitive senses. Mm -hmm. And so that, that makes them weird by definition, right? They're not like everybody else. And to wit, Neville Goddard was called the mad mystic of 42nd street. He held the, uh, you know, sessions <laughs> for years in New York city. And, you know, they were open to anybody who could come in and listen to him. And by the way, his recordings are all over YouTube and all over the internet. And obviously it's a good introductory uh, material for Christians. You know, it, I mean, Christians that are open to the possibility that the, the popular Christianity has been manipulated. Of course, if you're, if you're a Christian who doesn't want to hear that you learned some things that aren't true, then you're not going to like it. But Neville was called the Mad Mystic of 42nd Street for years, for like 20 years in New York. He eventually, he moved out to Los Angeles. Um, but so there's just a good example of somebody who gets labeled that. And obviously, Mad Mystic. I mean, they're crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Don't go, don't go listen to the Mad Mystic. He's crazy. So that's the impression that this is given. But I wanted to give my little definition, right? Which is that mysticism is really a remembrance of your own innate wisdom. And that remembrance comes through releasing, surrendering, letting go, opening up, meditating, all these types of things, right? That's when this your innate wisdom comes flowing back to you. So it's a it's a way of unwinding, you know, a lot of the nonsense that we've been taught. And yeah, when you the more you tap into that, the less normal you are in the eyes of most people. Not that you're some strange weirdo, but you just don't share in their views and opinions like you did prior to. Yeah? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm really seeing how these mystics would get like this bad name, right? Because like a, you know, a well-adjusted, normal intellectual of the day would have their, you know, book and they'd get their knowledge from the book because the book was written by someone smart. And it's got the right things in it. So whenever you wanted to know something, you'd be like, oh, yes, here it is right here on page 84. Mm -hmm. Right. But then you go see the mystics and the mystics are like, oh, <laughs> oh, like, oh, <laughs> you know, doing some dance, doing some med meditation. So it seems freaky deaky. Right. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 Even though that's just the path that they're taking to real wisdom instead of some brainwashing written in some <laughs> silly book. The, the professors right? all the crazy correct right and that was a big part oh, of yeah, energy says gravities are caused by <laughs> gravitons 9.8 meters a second <laughs> that right here in the book yeah and gurdjieff is a he's a good example of that right he didn't do any writing right he and his, all his stuff was very experiential right mm -hmm. um yeah 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 the, the fourth way yeah, he didn't stuff, write anything right? down Right. His, and, you know, he took a lot from the Sufis. They're uh, dancing, whirling dervishes and so forth. So, yeah, that's that's a way to shake off your brainwashing is what he was really mm -hmm. helping people with. Um. So, yeah. And, you know, that's, you know, all you can, you know, Neville was just teaching people. There's been a lot of Christian mystics. You know, Meister Eckhart is one that's come, you know, from Germany from back in the 12 or 1300s. St. Teresa of Avila is another one. Even St. Francis of Assisi considered a Christian mystic. And, you know, the most power, one of the most powerful books I've ever read is this book called The Cloud of Unknowing by a Christian mystic, an anonymous author. And, you know, you can judge by the title that the goal is to unknow all the stuff you think you know. And uh, it's a powerful book. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, these are some of the more popular. Joseph Benner uh, is another Christian mystic I'll point people to. He was, uh, Elvis Presley was a huge uh, fan of his and uh he's written four or five books i think one, it's called the Im the impersonal life is his most popular book but elvis swore up and down by him although that was never covered publicly or out in the open that was what he said privately 
So you could see he. I love that guy. Took the guidance and became. Yeah, he kind of became popular. <laughs> anyway, so what? Oh, we had a point about meditation here. Yeah, I just wanted to say that you know this. This kind of falls into all these categories, and a lot of people think it's something strange, or or they can't do it or it's too hard, or I can't stop thinking, or I need a good guided meditation. There's so much misinformation <laughs> around this term. And sounds like it's I, really bothering you, Brad. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, how many, I can tell you how many people I've, I've talked to and I asked, do you meditate? And they say, no. And I, I don't know if I'd be here today, if I didn't learn to meditate, uh, but I call it the art of doing nothing and I, hoping that that will land with people. What do you mean doing nothing? I'm meditating. And I say, and meditating means you're doing nothing. And, you know, they, oh, shall I shouldn't sit on a couch and cross my legs and light the incense. Yeah, you can do all those things. That's great. But the, those are all the things you're preparing to do your meditation. But once you sit down, the idea is to do nothing. That's meditation. <laughs> it's like So sleeping. when someone calls me up and says, what have you been doing all day? I can go, nothing. <laughs> well, yeah. And you... And, and it would be a huge benefit to you as well. So meditation is like sleeping. You don't do sleeping, right? You lay down, you close your eyes in bed, and then sleeping happens to you, right? You don't do it. It happens. And that's the same thing with meditation. You don't do meditation. It happens. Anyway, this isn't a podcast about meditation. I just wanted to get that out there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I guess we're arriving at the summary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just a couple points I wanted to make here, and we are, we did we did use up the hour here, by the way. So I'll 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 speed through these here. Um, I I can't recommend enough all the sources that I've mentioned in this podcast, and I you know I highly recommend people check out find you know hopefully one or two resonate, and go and you know put in a few hours of either reading or listening and give it a fair try, uh, because. Uh, you know, these definitions and ideas surrounding these words, channeling, new age, mysticism, occult, et cetera, are really, uh, you know, manipulative and very much incorrect. Hopefully we pointed that out. Um, what else here? Yeah. Okay. A couple hours, you know, that it's going to be difficult. I want to suggest that I, that from what, all that I'm hearing from all of these sources suggest that you know, as time goes forward, it's going to be difficult to cling tightly to uh, any religious or philosophical tradition in the popular domain in its present rigid dogmatic format. I don't, doesn't mean you have to reject God or Jesus or Buddha or anything like that, but it, the rigidity of it and the, and the dogma in it is what needs to be uh, loosened so to speak. And these mm -hmm. channeled sort these channeling sources can help do that. So it's I'm not saying that it's all wrong or bad, any of these religions. I'm saying they're it's a mixture. And these channeling sources can really help open you up. I mean, I'm working with two or three people right now who uh you know are, are really starting to see the light uh in just the last couple of months who were you know who were really frustrated with their uh you know popular religious viewpoints. And just a little bit of clarification was all was all it took for them. So it's happening fast. We're accelerating. So I'm really really pleased with uh, their progress. And I suggest it'll happen to anybody who's willing to give it a, a listen and give it a chance. Simple as that. Um. Yeah, and you know, I guess my the main point the you know the reason I wanted to do say do this clarifying podcast is just to say I'm going to use these terms in the future. And, uh, you know, so hopefully people will listen to this before podcast down the road and understand my meaning of these terms versus the popular idea around them. And ultimately, the, the best path forward from everything I've learned to date is to be open to the teachings from one or more of these sources of these channeled new age or mystic sources and the proofs in the pudding. It's not an, whether it's not a question of arguing things, we're going to do a, a podcast on mist, on metaphysics here soon. Uh, you know, the beauty of spirituality and metaphysics is you can't prove it to anybody else, but you can prove it to yourself. And that's the idea behind all of this is that take the guidance, listen to what's being said, 
alter some of your behaviors, your patterns, uh, your personality traits accordingly. And you'll be you be the judge of whether your your life gets better or not. That's kind of the idea behind these teachings. Yeah. Sounds good to me. And if you don't, I'm in agreement. <laughs> the suggestion is is that life is gonna there's gonna be a lot of struggle and suffering and difficulties. And the more we try to cling to a lot of this establishment brainwashing that has been foisted upon us for the last couple of millennia. I'd believe that. So if you're suffering, you're struggling, your life is seems to be getting worse for you. Uh, or, you know, things aren't working out the way you hoped. Uh, I su really suggest, you know, if obviously continuing to listen to our podcast, we'll try to cover salient relevant topics, but look into some of these sources and see if you're not, things aren't smoothing out for you and working out for you. Not, not, not too long thereafter. If you do what's being taught, there you have it. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think like a, you know, an easy one is just uh the abraham hicks stuff that's that's, that's like that's really relaxing highly aligned material right that makes you feel better you just listen to it and you're like oh yeah yeah i do feel I, good now it's funny i turned on someone to that just last week and she told me uh she didn't like her voice it was too high and squeaky and i'm like oh geez <laughs> but that's right that's an indicator that she wasn't ready for it so in fairness to her not everybody's ready for it You'll find and the Bashar stuff is pretty cool. Like he's a bit of fun. And I like the Saint Germain stuff. I like Saint Germain. He's cool. Yeah, he's my number one guy. But unfortunately, the main, the, my favorite channeler of Saint Germain, it doesn't do public stuff and only pops up once or twice a year. Anyway, but yeah, it's, it's good material too. The suggestion is, is that he's the avatar of the age of Aquarius. So Jesus was the avatar of the age of Pisces and St. Germain's going to be the avatar of the age of Aquarius for what it's worth. I don't know whether that's true or not. That's what I've heard from a couple different sources. Well, I'm sensing a St. Germain podcast coming soon. <laughs> Can you feel it? We'll get there. All right. So yeah. And all of this, obviously point every single one of these mystics and new age and occult uh, teachers is telling you that they're pointing to taking your power back. Every one of them about any exceptions? That's the idea. And it just so happens mm -hmm. we have a little course on the topic to help people along if uh, they'd like to hear our synthesized version of it. And it's all very mm -hmm. harmonious and simp simple. Simple. What's that word? <laughs> Simpatico uh, with all the channeling stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, below most of our podcast videos on our website, themindblendzone.com, you'll see this cool video that says, uh, this is how we fix the world. Uh, uh, yeah. it's a super cool video. So just watch that. It tells you this really cool story, bit of back, back bit of really uh, interesting background on ourselves that you wouldn't expect. And then uh, realizations that we had that, that led us to these, um, to, to, to this take your power back idea. And the course that we put together. So yeah, good video. And there's another thing on our website you can take advantage of now. It's um you'll see a button floating all over the place that says go premium. So I think we got a we got a 14 day trial. So literally for free, you can go right in and get all of our premium deep dives. Now at the time of making this, it's just episode 41. Uh, we just made one deep dive. Uh, within a couple of weeks, we'll have our second one. But yeah, going forward, we're going to have one deep dive coming out per month. So uh, whenever you go in, like if we got 100 episodes out right now and you go in, you're, you're going to get all of it, right? So whenever you sign up for the premium stuff, you get everything we've released. And then it'll just be 10 bucks a month after that. That's right. So pretty high quality stuff there. And we yeah. highly appreciate the support as well. That That helps us, you know, just make the podcast better and better. Exact the mundo. All right. Well, thank you, Matt. Hopefully everybody got a little uh, more clarity around some of these uh, taboo topics uh, as they're presented in the mainstream. And uh, boy, I sure hope people uh, check out some of the sources we mentioned here today. And uh, you get, I, I guarantee you'll get some value out of it if you stick with it. No question about it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Awesome. All right. All right. Thank you, Brad.
Thanks, Thanks everyone Matt. for w- watching and listening. Thanks, everybody. We will catch you on the next podcast. Bye-bye.